There were 1.3 million school-age children in Massachusetts. Not on the whole planet, but in Massachusetts. Approximately 1.3 million school-age children. And I'd like for you to just visualize for a quick moment the space in which they learn. Some of you probably visualized a classroom. Some of you may have visualized their home. Did any of you visualize the International Space Station? I know I wasn't doing that three years ago. So three years ago, the MIT Space Systems Laboratory approached my organization, the Massachusetts After School Partnership, and said, we have some satellites aboard the International Space Station, and we want to teach middle school kids how to code them. So, say that again? We have some satellites on the International Space Station, and we want to teach middle school kids how to code them over a five-week period during the summer. But we don't know how to find kids. And I thought to myself, rocket scientists. <laughs> <laughs> there are 1.3 million school-age kids in Massachusetts. And so that became the birth of Zero Robotics. Now, there are two Zero Robotics competitions. There is a high school competition, which looks very different than the middle school competition. I'm gonna talk about the middle school competition. But so you have a frame of reference, the high school competition takes place in a school typically across the country. It's actually now gone international and we have students across the world participating in the high school competition. And it takes, period, takes, takes place over a period of time and there's a teacher in the classroom and they're doing it, they're programming and coding satellites during the school day and as part of their after school program. The middle school zero robotics program looks very different. For one, it was very important to the Massachusetts after school partnership to target the most marginalized and disengaged children in our communities. We wanted to engage the disengaged in this learning opportunity. And so we went out to middle, we targeted middle school programs across, actually not across Massachusetts. We had to stay within an MIT, the transit system of MIT. And I'll talk a little bit more about how we targeted programs and what we did. But let me just first say zero robotics stands for zero gravity because the competition takes place on the space station. It stands for zero configuration because over the iterations, we're now at a point where you don't have to download any special software to your computer. You can actually just access the competition and, and the interface on the web. And it stands for zero cost. Again, trying to engage the disengaged, we didn't want cost to be a barrier to children participating in the Zero Robotics program. So it is Zero Robotics. There are three bowling ball satellites on the space station. They're called SPHERES, S-P-H-E-R-E-S. That stands for Synchronized, Position, Hold, Engage, Reorient, Experimental Satellites. Say that again. <laughs> Uh, that only took me about two years to, to practice that. Um, but the synchronized position hold, engage, reorient experimental satellites are really a test bed for NASA and the Department of Defense. And what they're there for is they're on the International Space Station to help NASA and the Department of Defense figure out uh, formation flight, docking maneuvers, close proximity uh, thruster estimations, all stuff that I can't spell algorithm. I don't know what half of this stuff is. <laughs> but this is all really a, a, a database. What's happened is we now have this database of algorithms that middle school students have been helping NASA and MIT create. 
The vision here, to try and put it into layman's terms and my terms, uh, is that if something were to go wrong with the International Space Station, it's very costly to do a spacewalk. And it's also very dangerous to take one of our astronauts and put them out, out on the exterior of the space station to see if something's wrong, to figure out what we need to do, to see if there's a problem that needs to be fixed. And so the goal is that these sphere satellites would be deployed. And they would be deployed to, um, they've now gone through various iterations, which I can talk a little bit about later. But they're really there to figure out how do we use these small satellites in space. And so, Zero Robotics is students will spend five weeks. So MIT came to us and they said, Katie, we want these kids to do this for five week period. So what we did was we took MIT students, we put them into 10 middle school programs across Massachusetts. And then the, the MIT students taught, taught middle school students and middle school educators how to teach coding and programming in the summer program over a five week period of time. And to be realistic, it's four weeks because by the fourth week your code needs to be finished so we can send it to NASA and then we can send it to the International Space Station. And what happens is that code then gets sent to the space station and kids across middle school kids who have never been exposed to coding and programming are, come together at MIT and we do a live uplink to the space station. And it is cool. It's a really wonderful opportunity for these young students. And they then get to see their code run in space and then engage in a conversation with an astronaut. When we did this the first year, we called it a battle. But then when I sat down and watched the competition, the spheres moved like this. <laughs> and he said, we can't call this a we can't call this we can't call this a battle. And so the Spears competition has to be fun. So year two, we said, this is great. The kids can do it. We're gonna do it again this year. And so we got MIT mentors and we sent them out to middle school programs. But what we realized very quickly was that if we wanted to give more kids this opportunity, we couldn't just take MIT students and put them in every middle school summer camp or summer program across the state or across the country. So we took year three off, we created a curriculum. Now, I run the Massachusetts After School Partnership. The Massachusetts After School Partnership is a statewide organization and our goal is to increase and improve learning opportunities for children outside of their traditional school day. And we typically do this through public policy and advocacy work. But as our organization has grown and we now enter into our 11th year, we realize that there's more to just the public policy piece, this professional development of our in-school and out-of-school educators that needs to take place. And we also need to know, we also learned that curriculum that's designed for an out-of-school educator needs to be developed. Because if there's one thing you don't want to do is tick off an in-school science teacher by running her math lesson and her, or her science classes during the after-school program. You want to complement what they're doing in school. You don't want to duplicate it. You don't want to replicate it. You want to complement what they're doing. So we took year three off and we created this curriculum that could be taught to an in-school and out-of-school educator. And then what we did last year was we piloted that curriculum in four other states. And what we learned was in Georgia, California, Florida, Massachusetts, and Idaho is that they targeted the same population of students, they learned the curriculum, they were able to get all of these students to get a code together by the end of five weeks and sent it to the International Space Station. Now designing this curriculum was, was a bit of a challenge. 
you're trying to take concepts that aren't even in the current curriculum frameworks. We don't teach coding. We don't teach programming. We don't have those curriculum frameworks in, in place. And, and the math and physics concepts that a child needs to know to try and program these spheres um, is, is often intimidating to an in-school or out-of-school teacher, whoever's working in that arena. But we created it, and we made sure that it was fun, that it was engaging, and then what we did was we created the website. And the website is very similar to Scratch, for those of you who might know Scratch. It's a high graphical editor where you can drag and drop code into, into the, into the uh, website, run a simulation. This is an image of a simulation that's currently in place. It has the same parameters of the International Space Station. And, and you can click on the other end and see the high level language. You can see the C code that's actually required <coughs> to run this simulation. And this healthy, immersive, cooperative competition is what our kids are engaging in over the summer. They're being exposed. That's my Boston Strong crew. And, uh, <laughs> this is a sphere. Um, and this is in Florida. We've got kids that are really engaged in this, this learning opportunity outside of school. And so we are now moving into 10 programs, 10 states, excuse me, this summer. 10 states have selected their, uh, their sites. We're doing an online training for the educators. Um, we're attaching professional development points to that so that they're now being exposed and learning a new type of uh, content that isn't typically available during the school day. And so, as I work with this unlikely partner, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology and the Space Systems Laboratory, they have a few goals and long-term objectives of this project. One is they really want to make sure that as long as that space station is operating and is up there, that that laboratory is available to our young people and that we're using it and we're leveraging it and we're exposing our kids to the space station and what it can do. We all hear about STEM. STEM. It's, if you haven't heard about STEM and the importance of STEM in the past three years, you've been living under a rock, candidly. And so many of us in the education and after school world look at STEM and we hear about how important it is to education. Education, it's an education issue. The reality is it's not only an education issue. Empowering our young people in the areas of STEM is a workforce issue and it's a defense issue. We need to be developing the next generation of coders and programmers and aquanauts and astronauts. We need to be exposing these children to things like the space station so that while this is an exceptional work that they're doing, this shouldn't be the exception. The other thing that's really important to the Space Systems Laboratory is that we're shifting culture and we're shifting society in a way that area competition or arena competitions, excuse me, becomes a new norm where muscles that are being flexed and muscles that are being used are that is the brain. And that homecoming for MIT students is not necessarily a football game, but a robotics competition. And for me at the Massachusetts After School Partnership, what's really important about this work is 80% of a child's waking hours is spent outside of a classroom. 80% of their time is not in that classroom. And we put way too much on our in-school teachers and our educators mm -hmm. that to make our children successful when 80% of their time is outside of that classroom. 
And so when we start to think about public policy and advocacy and how it connects to robotics and coding and programming and the space station, I want to ask you all to think about the policies and the systems that are currently in place that support our children and their learning during their out of school time hours. And how can we shift the conversation and the discussion so that our children are learning what they need to learn to be successful in their future? Ask that when you leave here, you engage in deeper conversations with your peers, with your educators, and with your policymakers about how we can create the next generation of students. And again, like I said, this isn't the exception. This is the norm. And having access to the space station and learning the skills that they need to learn to be successful is provided for them and that we are giving them the opportunity that they have to be successful. <laughs>